Oh, I got something to cheer my girl up. Well, good, because I finished off the last bottle this morning. <laughs> These videos are not for children. If you're a children, then piss off. I think people would love to see a 90s set follow-up to see, you know, what Kitty and the Foremans are up to now. Would, is that something you would ever be into? <laughs> I would do that in a second. Hey there, it's me, your least favorite YouTuber, V Infuso. And a lot of you have probably already heard that Netflix has ordered a sequel to That 70s Show. A show that came out 20 years ago that took place 20 years prior to that. To say that this is out of left field is a little bit of an understatement. And for the past few hours, I've gotten a bunch of my subscribers and friends in my personal life hit me up asking for my take on all of it. So here it is. Thus far, the original main cast isn't scheduled to make any appearances on the show. But it is, however, believed that Netflix will be trying to get Topher Grace, Laura Preppen, Ashton Kutcher, and Mila Kunis to come in for minor guest starring roles throughout. So fingers crossed that at the very least we get to see an Eric and Donna cameo. If the audience is there, then the sky's the limit. Who knows who can show up? Although, I think it's probably a safe bet that we won't be seeing Hyde showing up anytime soon. However, Kurtwood Smith and Deborah Jo Rubb are confirmed to be returning and starring in the series, reprising their roles as Kitty and Red Foreman. A more than welcome return, if you ask me. Which, you guys were. In addition to starring in the show, they'll also be producing it as well. They weren't the stars of the original series, but their performances and on-screen chemistry with one another stole the spotlight on more than one occasion. So I, for one, am excited to see them return in any capacity. The show's plot has Eric and Donna's daughter, Leia, and of course she'd be named Leia, that is one of only two acceptable names for Eric Foreman's child. It was either that or Pink Floyd. Eric and Donna's daughter goes to spend the summer at her grandparents' house. I just can't believe we're never going to hear that sound in our house again. Not until we have grandchildren. Grandchildren! <laughs> oh, I forgot about grandchildren! So did I. It's a pretty simple premise, but with the proper execution, it could be very effective. Granted, I am going into this with some of my own doubts. Making this show so long after the original series' run, so far removed from the show's relevance, and using less than a third of the show's major characters is a little bit concerning, at least on paper. But then again, on the other hand, the removal of the main cast as regulars will probably free up some room for newer characters to be explored and developed. The premise of the show kind of reminds me of Archie Bunker's Place, the spin-off to Olin the Family that saw Archie and Edith take in the daughter of Edith's step-cousin, Stephanie. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but that's the vibe that I'm getting. But then again, that is me going into this with very limited knowledge on what is going on. Overall, I think it's probably a smart business move. Nostalgia sells nowadays. And there's a whole lot of it wrapped up in this project. You have the curiosity view of people who love these characters and love that 70s show. And want to see some sort of expansion to it. Then you have the view of people my age who of course have fond feelings of the 90s. What with having grown up in them. And you have the view of some younger people who romanticize that time period because, yeah, I guess the 90s were, was just Kurt Cobain and, and smiley face t-shirts. There is a lot of potential here. And I really hope that the final product meets it. As of now, one season of 10 episodes has been ordered for the series. If it gets any additional episodes or not are all dependent on the audience's feedback. Regardless of whether it succeeds or not, I think its mere existence is kind of a triumph. I'm always happy to see actors whose work I enjoy getting a paycheck. So even if all else fails, then at least they got theirs. But I'm genuinely happy to see the return of Red and Kitty. I don't know if it'll fail or succeed. I don't exactly have a crystal ball that I look into to see all this shit. Even if I do on occasion make a prediction that ends up coming true. So I don't know whether it'll be good or bad. But I do know that I'll be watching to find out. And I'm excited to do so. So now you know what I think. Why don't you go ahead and let me know what you guys think. Will that 90s show recapture our love for that 70s show? Or will it be another that 80s show? 
let me know in the comment section below. With that being said, I was your least favorite YouTuber, V Infuso, and I thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. I am vengeance. I am the knight, and that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So, if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> <laughs>